We've been talking about love all week, all month. Not all year, but all month. Um, so let's see. I have a question for you. And this question you can turn and share to your friend or friendly neighborhood person beside you. Question is, if you were to show love, which is choosing to treat others the way that you want to be treated, to your mama, and you can have all the money in the world, all the time in the world, it is your call, how would you choose to show love to your mama? Turn and share. JJ, what'd you come up with? You would car, you would change car. the thing of the day. Mm. You would be here. You just said bye, Carl. You would get her. You would get her. Nice. That's a good one. Mm. A lot of good ideas. Massage. I heard buy a new car, buy a house, like a special house. What was special about the house? It would be special because she's always wanted like a ranch house. A ranch house with a lot, a lot of land. And what color would the door be? A green door. All right, I like it. You guys got some good options. How about this? If you were to do the same, but this time with your brother or sister, is there a way that you would show love to them? What, uh, what did you do? What did you do? That would be cool. Huh? You have like a suggestion? What would you do, Grace? Ouch. That sounds like a great one. I think Carson said he'd, he'd buy an island. A volcanic island. I don't really understand it, but <laughs> what'd you come up with? Fifty what? Inside the tower? Would it be like desk on desk on desk on desk all the way up? Fifty floors, and each floor has a desk. Yikes! Did you hear that, brother? He would not destroy it on purpose this time. All right. Well, what about this one? Your pet. We'll pretend you get one and then you can spoil it. <laughs> you could get like a stunt man to do that. Your dog would love that. Oh, I've seen your dog. It is big. What would you do for your turtle? Nice. I like it. I like it. You guys got some good options here. Um, you would spend time with it. Uh, we talked about getting a stunt double because, like, her dog's a little bit rough sometimes, and so then they could just tear that stunt double up. <gasps> oh, Brian, did you catch that one? Unintentional, but I said that her dog was rough. <laughs> Ah, oh, I know, Brian. Come on, Will got it. It was unintentional. Um, now I noticed that you guys said a couple of different things that I liked. Like you, you thought about the person that I was talking about and decided that you were going to show love in a way that they would receive it. No one mentioned getting your mom a a dog collar or anything weird like that. A turtle collar. <laughs> For your sister. No, that doesn't even fit. You guys mentioned things that, for the most part, <clears throat> for the most part, that your siblings would really like, or that your mother would really like, or that your pets would really like, and you were showing them love in a way that they would like. But my question today, and the way I want to start, and I want you to think about this, 
don't answer it, don't shout it, but if you were to want to show love to God, like what, what, what would that look like? It's like, I don't know, if you bought him a beach house, he, uh, he made the beach, so... Oops, not not the best gift there. Or like you can make an art project where you paint your face because Jesus loves you, so make your face art. But I don't think he'd be able to do it justice. And he knows like how many hairs are on your head, so wouldn't it be the most accurate painting? You can give him money. No, uh, he has like everything. Uh, huh. That's a harder question. And there's actually a story in the Bible where somebody wants to show love to Jesus and they want to give him something. And it's a little bit of a crazy story. And so to help me with our story today, I, I got my friend Tucker Music to come up. Yay, Tucker! Give him a round of applause. Yay! Now, uh, Tucker... I need you to do a couple things for me. First, I need you to look up the book of Mark. Yeah. It is New Testament, Old Testament. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, sixth graders struggling today. Second chapter of the New Testament, and it's written by a guy named Mark, which works in this situation. Um, and let's see. We got Mark. He's, he's flipping and finding. We're in 14. And let's see. This time in Jesus' life... Like, we've already been teaching about him for a while. He, he's grown in popularity. He's done a lot of miracles. He's grown a very big crowd. Um, we've talked about some of his friends, Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Um, what did we talk about last week? It was Mary and Martha? Seems like forever ago. The longest winter break ever. Did anyone happen to go to Arizona during their break? I never heard. Oh, Tucker, nice. All right, so let's see. Um, they are in um, the Last Supper? No, that's a little bit later. See, Jesus hasn't been arrested yet, but his time is coming. And there's people that are following Jesus around. There's people that are wanting to learn about him. But around this time, there's also people that are feeling really threatened by Jesus. There's these religious leaders that are like, you know... That guy is getting pretty popular, and I don't know if he's going to, like, create this uprising and, and, like, man, if they overthrow the government, that's going to be bad. And so these religious leaders start to get a little bit concerned about Jesus. They start to plot some bad things about Jesus. But let's see. We're not there yet. Let's see. Um, why don't you just start in verse 1? Until when, Corey? Until I say that's good. Okay. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were only two days away. The leavened, yeah. leavened, the chef priest, <laughs> the chief priest, and the teachers of the law were plotting to arrest Jesus secretly. They wanted to kill him, but not during the feast, they said. The people may stir up trouble. Jesus was in Bethany. He was at the table in the home of Simon, who had a skin disease. Do you know about Simon? Oh. <laughs> so Simon was this, like, uh, important dude. But he had the skin disease. And we don't really know much about it. It could have been leprosy. That would make sense. There's a lot of leprosy going around then. We also don't know if Jesus healed him. But that would be my guess. Jesus healed a lot of people with leprosy. So he's hanging out at this guy's house, and they're going to eat. All right, keep reading. A woman came with a special sealed drawer. It contained very expensive perfume made out of pure nard. Correct. This woman, like this story is written in a couple of the different parts of the Bible, the Gospels, which are. And we see that this woman has a name. Her name is Mary. Um, I'm, I'm not totally sure which Mary because there's like 10,000 Marys in the Bible. <laughs> but let's see. Mary brings this jar and it's an alabaster jar, which the jar in of itself would be an expensive jar then. And so, like, there's a difference between a cheap jar and a nice jar, like a styrofoam coffee cup and a Batman sparkly beautiful coffee cup. 
One of them costs more. So picture in this one more of the Batman sparkly kind of a perfume container, not the styrofoam one. She's got this expensive jar of nard. <laughs> you guys familiar with the old nard, right? Nard dog. <laughs> He's it all the time. Well, it's like this essential oil almost. It's a very expensive thing. It would be a perfume often used for like burials because when someone dies, they stinketh. All right, continue. Stinketh. She broke the jar open and poured the perfume on Jesus' head. Some of the people there became angry. They said to one another, why waste this perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's pay. The money could have been given to the poor, to the poor people. So they found fault with the woman. Leave her alone, Jesus said. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. You will always have poor people with you. You can help them anytime you want to. But you will not always have, have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body to prepare me to be buried. What I'm about to tell you is true. What she has done will be told anywhere the good news is preached all over the world. It will be told in memory of her. Nerve. So, uh, and it is. Like you're still telling the story 2,000 years later about this woman who did something crazy. She broke this jar. Now, Tucker, um, can you do me a favor? Those shoes are very white and fancy. Can you remove them for me? I know, right? You have no idea yet. So in, in this, take your time. Don't worry about it. Um, in this lesson, it suggested doing something that I thought was a little bit insane. They wanted you to maybe like get a volunteer on stage and talk to them about how Jesus did this crazy, awesome thing where he's sitting there and Mary comes up and she's got these two very valuable, or just one, I guess. Very, oh, yes, you are. Very valuable things. They would take um, this expensive jar and break it and then pour it on Jesus. Um, but, Tucker, like, no... Mountain Dew's not really your thing, and cupcakes not really your thing, and I wanted you to feel this lesson, because there's times that, like, it just, it means something more to you, and so, <laughs> essentially, what happened here was Mary came in with this very nice, expensive thing that, like, was just the best, and instead of going... Like, just really carefully uh, opening it up and being like, okay, Jesus, uh, perfume, perfume. What she did was she took the whole thing and just, like, poured it out on Jesus as an offering. Now, not just, like, his feet, but his head. But I'm not going to do that to you because that would be cruel. And it was completely wasted, like done. And like Mary, she could have just poured out a little bit of it and it would have been a good offering. It would have been a great way to show Jesus love. But she went like above and beyond in this example. She, she broke the jar. She poured it completely out to celebrate Jesus. And it would have been, been like, um, I, this is just a reward for sitting there. Um, it would have been like if... Tucker, I, I got this monster, and I just poured a little bit of it out. And then you're like, well, what are you going to do with the rest of that monster? And I'm like, here you go, bud. And he'd be like, yes, extra monster. Um, and he would have been much more okay with that. But the religious leaders, the people that were there saw him do this, saw Mary pour this perfume out, and they were like, whoa, what? Time out. Um, this is expensive. This was basically a year's salary, which is a lot of money. It would have been Mary's entire savings that she breaks open and pours out. And the people are like, but like, think about that money. You could have fed the hungry people. There's poor people that could have been fed. And Jesus doesn't scold her. Jesus doesn't go, yeah, Mary, come on. Bad stewardship here. You could have used that money better. Did you catch what Jesus said? It, it's, uh, Hunter, it's on the scripture. I, I want to make sure that we catch, or maybe I didn't put that one on there. 
I know that you read it, so I'll let you read it again. How do your feet feel? Sticky. Sticky. What's weird is it kind of stinks. <laughs> Jesus said, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. You will always have poor people with you. You can help them anytime you want to, but you'll not always have me. Uh, she did what she could. She poured perfume on my body to prepare me to be buried. What I'm about to tell you is true. What she has done will be told anywhere the good news is preached all over the world. It will be told in memory of her. So what Mary did was she showed love to Jesus in a way that Jesus would receive it. You can start cleaning up. I don't want you to sit here forever all awkward with your feet in monster. Um, it looks weirder than I thought it would have. I was expecting it to be green. Um, so let's see. Mary showed love to Jesus in a very radical and big way. And I would bet that there are things that you could do today to show love to to Jesus. Now, it might not look like what Mary did. And I don't think we're all called to do exactly what Mary did, to save up all of our money and buy perfume and smash it. That doesn't, it seems like a situation that you needed to be there for. But for us today, I do believe that there are times that this week you could show love to Jesus. So let's stop for a second and let's think about these. And I don't want you to throw out just like a, a hypothetical, like, oh, yeah, Jesus, Bible, Holy Spirit, uh, church. Um, but like, what is a real thing that Carson Poland could do this week to show love to God? And it might be a radical big thing, or it might be another thing, but a way that you can show love to God. So I want to talk about those. What do you think? Tucker, you said sign up for camp, and then you smiled, but I'm curious. How could that be an actual way that you show love to God? Uh, by taking a week out of your time and being intentional with community and to be intentional with, uh, with Christ and just to really give a week uh, worth of attention and detail and um, dedication to Christ and with people who will hold you accountable. And I think that's like a real thing to actually decide I'm going to choose community this week. I might even step out of my comfort zone because I'm not the most comfortable away from my mom and dad. I'm going to go anyway. That's a big deal. And like leaders, I, I completely recognize that that is a way that you show love to God, that you say, okay, this week I'm not only going to not work, therefore not get paid, but I'm going to go pay money to go to a kid's camp and give my time and energy towards that. That's a, that's a huge way to show love to God. I think that's a real one. Even if you were being a little silly, I think it's a complete great example. How else could you do it, though? How else could you show love to God this week? Praying and spending time with Him. And how does that show love? Yeah. makes sense. It's like what we do with our friends. If we want to show love to our friends, we're not going to ignore them when they're hanging out with us. We're not going to just sit there on our device and be like, all right, whatever, okay, have fun. Um, but we're going to talk to them, engage with them. We do the same with God. I like, it's a good example. Yeah. Spending time with your siblings. And how does spending time with a sibling show love to God? Yeah, so we're showing love to our sibling, which models our love for God. I, I think that's a great example. Yes, Haley? <laughs> Try to be nice to them, even if they're mean. Man, it kind of actually looks a lot like Jesus because people were super mean to him, and he still loved his enemies all the time. Yes, sound man. So being obedient to what God says shows love. So like, is that true with our parents too? 
So if we want to show love to our parents, we do what they say. Want to show love to God, we do it. He says, I agree. Now, let's see. You came up with a couple of examples. But my question is going to be a little bit more personal. And I think this is a safe place to answer it. So uh, what will you actually do this week to show love to God? Can you think of something that is like a real one, not a I might do this or it's good to do this, but a real one, real one? Okay. So what I like to do when I'm really close to someone is I like to make fun of them, like poke around and joke with them. I learned that's not always the best thing to do. So I am going to try to compliment people more, trying to compliment the people that I'm either jealous of or if to compliment the ones that I love. I like it. That's a real one. Anybody else want to share one? His brain's working. You can't have all the answers. Yes, Tyler. Spending more time with your brother? I think that'd be a good one. I know he'd love that. And it's a good way to show love. Putting his needs before your own. Yeah, Haley. Forgiving someone, that's definitely a big deal. It's freeing up your heart. I, lo I love that. Yeah, Grace. Yep. Having a good attitude. Definitely a good one. Carson? Not getting mad at people? The way you say people and look at me makes me a little bit scared. Okay. <laughs> Not getting mad at people. <laughs> so how can you how can you do this? How can you actually like not get mad at people to show love to God? Yeah, asking your helper, the Holy Spirit, to help you stay calm. I think that's a big deal. And man, when you keep it in perspective, when you're like really thinking about it in the big picture, um, it's way easier to be peaceful and live at peace with one another when you realize like life's short. Why, why would I want to be mean to them or by Tucker? It's good times. Okay, good. Well, let's do this. Um, I'm going to turn things over to Will in a second, and we'll have an opportunity to worship, which is a, a great way to show love to God, to like be like, for a couple of minutes, I'm going to be distraction-free. I'm going to focus on Him and pour my heart out to Him. Um, we'll be able to take communion and remember His love. But before we jump into that, I do want to have an opportunity to pray and ask for God's help, ask our helper uh, in this in this lesson. So will you do me a favor and uh, be Clorox free wipes, just, just undistracted and pray? <laughs> Let's pray. Father, I thank you for loving us and for just being so patient with us. Uh, help us to be more like you. Help us to show love, even when it's not earned or deserved, even when it's hard. Uh, even when the other person's annoying us, help us to show love. And God, may our attitudes this week and our actions this week uh, prove our love to you, that we will show others how much we love our Father through the way that we treat uh, his people. Um, God, I thank you for your grace when we fail and for continuing to help us to take our next step of becoming more like you. We love you, Father. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.